And Brian, you're a season ticket holder. You're an attorney. Um, what's going to happen? What are you hearing? Well, Don, I will tell you, first of all, I'm not buying into the fact that he's got dementia. There has been a pattern in practice out here in Los Angeles. A lot of folks know about it. Mr. Sterling has been sued previously for having uh, not rented apartment buildings. He owns a lot of apartment buildings. He's been sued for not renting to blacks and Hispanics. He said openly he doesn't like blacks and Hispanics. So this is bigger than the LA Clippers. This is about human decency and human dignity. I Mutual think they have a very good others. chance of getting out of their contracts. And then what are we left with? The city of Los Angeles won't even have a team left in, in, here unless he's removed as the owner. Hmm. Well, you know, they've got the Lakers, right? So. Well, like in I your said, estimation, we won't have a team. I, we won't have a team in Los Angeles. <laughs> as a Clippers fan, though, he cannot you recall anything that. about the crash. If he is sued and his memory does not come back, would he be able to use a lack of recollection as a defense in court? Remember, you've got a civil aspect of this and then, mm -hmm. and then a potential criminal prosecution for manslaughter. The fact that he can't remember what happened would be devastating to, to the prosecution trying to charge him right. with manslaughter. And then you've got the issue of the positive, tra positive track control. I mean, I don't think they can Have prosecute this engineer. That he was indeed fit to fly. They say they had no knowledge of those medical notes that were found in his apartment torn up saying that he was unfit to fly. Do you think that Lufthansa faces liability here? Yeah, Poppy, look, th th this is ridiculous. I'm pretty outraged by this. If you want to run an airline and you want to hire a pilot that is going to put 150 lives in his or her hands, then you as the airline better hire somebody to assess these pilots. And I'll tell you what the real story is here. Airlines worldwide don't really want to know what the truth is about their pilots, because if they do find out, that so will put them on notice. The mental health aspect of this, and all I'm trying to say here is that in a situation like this and the other mass shootings we've had, you've got to look at the red flags. There are red flags. What we as a society do with these red flags is really the teachable moment in all the of The videotape this. of, of uh, Freddie Gray only started when he was on the ground. We don't really know what transpired exactly with the police officers leading up to him being on the ground. His spine was 80 percent uh, severed. His voice box was crushed. I find it hard to believe that that would happen in a van. And, and some of the police officers had their, it looked like they had their knees in his back. And, and Carol, go back to that video. When they picked up Freddie, Brown, or Freddie Gray, it looked like he had trouble even walking on his own. They were carrying him, looked like they were throwing a slab of meat into a freezer. So I'm not even sure it, it happened Here, Carol, inside the van. We have flat out uncontroverted facts that Freddie Gray was physically perfectly fine before he was detained without any probable cause. And 40 minutes later, he had a severed spine and a crushed voice box. And he was only at the hands of police custody. So we already have a lot of questions answered. And it should not take long to indict some or all of these police officers. Well, I'll tell you what's going to be in that report, George. You're going to find three vertebrae in the back of Freddie Gray severed. And th what that tells me, and I've been in the trenches, by the way, George, for the last 10 years dealing with these cases out here in, in Southern California. And what that autopsy report's going to tell you is that Freddie Gray could not have sustained three severed vertebrae without blunt force trauma, and it's got to be consistent trauma pressed on his back. So let's get rid of this mythical, magical Houdini act that the police department released today suggesting that Freddie Gray somehow intentionally what, harmed what himself. What this is telling me is somebody is trying to orchestrate a, a theory that might support the proposition that Freddie harmed himself. And that is, 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 is what's triggering even more uh, outrage, not only uh, there in Baltimore, but Philadelphia, and by the way, here in Los Angeles on Saturday, George.